All right. Um, so this problem is going to be very similar to the one that I just went over. We could do the 4 times 25, which would give you 100. And then you say, what two numbers multiply to give you 100 that add to give you 20? And your two answers would be 10 times 10, right? Yeah. Right? OK. And then we could do the same thing. We could go through 4x to the 4th plus 10x um, cubed plus 10x cubed plus 25x squared. And actually, I'm sorry, even factoring out to this, we could actually, first of all, I can kind of jump the gun. We can factor out an x squared, first of all, right? Let's actually do that first. Always take out what they have in common, which would be an x squared. That leaves you with a 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. This will still be the same, but now you'd have x squared. Um, so 4x squared plus 10x plus 10x plus 25. Then you could do follow the same process, right? Factor by grouping. Yes? Group these first two terms. Group the last two terms. What do the first two have in common? A 2. So you can factor out a 2x, and you can get x plus 5. Factor out the next one. Uh, you can factor out again for that one. You can factor out a 5. Uh, sorry, when you factor that left, you're left with a 2x plus 5. Factor out a positive 5, and you're left with a 2x plus 5. So then you factor out what they have in common again. So you get a 2x plus 5 times a 2x plus 5. So your final answer is x squared times 2x plus 5. x plus 5 times x plus 5 is x plus 5 squared. All right? But there's another way that we can also look at this, ladies and gentlemen. What we notice is this is what we call a um, perfect square trinomial. And a perfect square trinomial looks like this. a plus b squared is equal to a plus b times a plus b. Obviously, right? If you were to multiply that out, you would get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. That's what a perfect square binomial turns into a perfect square trinomial, right? Does everybody follow this? So an easier method, rather than doing all of this work that you could possibly do, always look to see, when you look at a problem, see if it follows difference of two squares. Remember, difference of two squares is when you have two terms. The first term's a square number, and the last term's a square number, right? So let's, you can do this. There's nothing wrong with doing it this method. But let's try to look at trying to do things a little bit quicker. If I look at this, and if I know a squared plus b squared, I look at these two terms. Is this a squ First of all, let's factor out an x squared. So we're left with 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. OK. Is this a squared term? Can we write this as a number squared? Yeah, we can rewrite this as 2x squared squared, right? Because 2x squared squared is going to be 4x to the 4, or 4x. 2x. 2x squared is, can be rewritten as 4x squared. And then can we write this as a squared number? Yeah, it's 5 squared, right? Now, is our middle term twice a times b? So this would be a, this would be b. Is our middle term twice that? Yeah, so what you could just do is to say, oh, OK, that's your a and that's your b. And since I know that this is a squared, or this is a, then that's a squared. This is b, and that's b squared. And this is 2 times a times b. Well, then I automatically know already that this follows this trinomial. So I can write it as a factored form of 2x plus 5 squared. So you could do it a little bit quicker once you get a little bit used to seeing what perfect square trinomials look like. All right, But 